In this section, I'll show you how to create rich content using Confluence. First, we'll learn some basic formatting features like creating a Confluence page and using the Confluence editor to insert rich content. Then I'll demonstrate a few of Confluence's more advanced editing features, including keyboard shortcuts and autocomplete, to help you create content fast. Lastly, we'll take a look at how to encourage new user adoption by creating a personal space and how features like page templates, autosave, and versioning can create a fearless editing experience for users. I've added these time intervals to help you locate the information you care most about in this section. Let's jump into an existing space that's used for collaboration amongst a development team so I can show you just how fast and easy it is to create a page that lists the launch tasks for an upcoming product release. Let's jump into an existing space that's used for collaboration amongst a development team so I can show you just how fast and easy it is to create a page that lists the launch tasks for an upcoming product release. You can add new pages in any space which you have the Create Page permission. Just select Page from the Add menu in the top right of the screen. To save time and increase your productivity, you can also use the keyboard shortcut C to add a page. This is just one of the many keyboard shortcuts available to help you navigate Confluence and create content really fast. You can reference all of the shortcuts available at any time by viewing the keyboard shortcuts dialog accessible from your browse menu. Since I'm using a Mac, Confluence is directing me to use the command key. If you're using Windows, Confluence will prompt you to use the control key instead. Adding a new page opens up the Confluence Editor, where we can give the page a title. Now we'll use the Confluence Editor to insert content in a similar way that you might with the most popular word processors, and apply formatting by clicking the icons in the toolbar. Let's start by adding a large header to the top of the page. Then we'll insert a table by clicking the table icon in the toolbar of the editor, which will trigger a dropdown where I can easily specify the exact number of rows and columns that I want. Notice that I am now given table operations to edit and manage my table. This section of the toolbar is contextual and will only show up if there is a table on the page. The table toolbar offers a lot of powerful operations, including the ability to merge table cells and highlight table cells. Let's create some tasks for my team to complete for the Angry Nerds launch. One of my tasks for this release is to create a video that highlights the new features available. I started drafting the page earlier this week, so I'll just link to it. Let's use the Insert Link dialog by clicking the Link icon in the toolbar. From the Search tab, I can search for and insert links to content that lives inside Confluence, including pages, blog posts, attachments, and people. Now I can quickly access the page I drafted for my video from the Launch Tasks page. Now, let's add the profile picture macro to the owner column so that users know what I look like and can click the image to jump to my personal space to learn more about me. Confluence comes bundled with a number of macros that let you add extra functionality or dynamic content to a page or blog post. You can insert macros using the macro browser from within the insert menu or using the keyboard shortcut Command Shift A. Macros in the macro browser are grouped into categories in the left hand column. This is an effective way to help users manage the list of macros and discover new ones. The macro we are looking for is called the Profile Picture Macro, which we can quickly find using the search box in the top right of the macro browser. Once I've found the macro I'm looking for, I can quickly configure it and insert it onto the page. We've successfully inserted the macro onto the page, and you can clearly see my profile picture in the editor. In the fourth column, Mark Status, We'll insert a macro that will help viewers of the page quickly identify at what stage I'm at with the task. For this particular macro, I can change its color and title before clicking refresh to preview how it will be displayed when I save the page. The macro renders exactly as it would if you save the page, providing clarity for what your page will eventually look like. This is what is known as a macro placeholder, a visual representation of your macro before publishing your page. While macros look very simple, they're even easier to edit. Every macro placeholder has a macro properties panel that provides additional functionality and a means for quick edits. The status macro provides me the option to launch the macro browser to edit the macro, quickly change the color of the status macro, or even remove it from the page. I can also double click the macro placeholder to quickly edit its settings. Finally, I can complete this row by adding some notes. To make it clear, I'll add a bulleted list to the table cell. I can also trigger a bulleted list by typing the keyboard shortcut Command Shift B. On second thought, I think I want to turn this bulleted list into a numbered list, 
so I'll just highlight the list and click the numbered list icon in the toolbar. I can also use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift N. These lists can be adjusted to display subpoints using the tab key, making it really easy for me to manage my content. Let's take a look at what our page looks like by previewing it. The page looks identical to what we created in the editor. With Confluence, what you see is what you get. Let's go back and add another task to our page. You can edit any Confluence page by clicking Edit or typing the keyboard shortcut E. This time, I'm going to use a feature we call Autocomplete to insert links and macros even faster. You can also insert images using the feature too. There are three trigger keys that you can use depending on the action you're trying to perform. Let's check them out by referencing the keyboard shortcuts dialog. Autocomplete makes it incredibly fast to insert images and files, links, and macros into pages and blog posts. My colleague Jerry needs to draft the Angry Nerds press release, so let's assign the task to him. I can trigger autocomplete for links by typing a left square bracket. Confluence will immediately recommend my most recently viewed pages or blogs. Since Jerry has not started drafting a page for the press release, I'll create a link for him to his new page. Let's call it Angry Nerds Press Release Draft. Then using my keyboard arrows, I can select Insert Link to Create a Page. By typing Enter, it will insert a red link on the page. When Jerry clicks the link, it will create a new page entitled Angry Nerds Press Release Draft and launch the editor so Jerry can begin mocking up the article. Now, just like we did earlier, let's add the profile picture macro, but this time we'll use autocomplete. I can trigger autocomplete for macros by typing a left brace. Autocomplete will suggest a list of Confluence's most popular macros, and I can start typing to search the other macros available. Using my keyboard arrows, I can select the macro and hit enter to launch the macro browser, where I can configure the macro. Let's do it again for the status macro. Again, I won't even touch my mouse. Finally, let's add some notes to Jerry's task. I'll want to make sure he uses the official Angry Nerds banner image in the press release, so I'll bring it up using Autocomplete for images. Autocomplete works for images, files, and documents, and a large variety of multimedia files. I can trigger Autocomplete for images and files by typing an exclamation point. Confluence immediately suggests the attachments of the current page, but there aren't any. The image I'm looking for is attached to a different page, so just like using autocomplete for links and macros, I can start typing to search for images across Confluence. Once I find the image, I can use my keyboard arrows to select it and hit enter to insert it on the page. Just like links in Confluence, I can click on embedded images to open the image properties panel. This makes it really easy for me to define a custom width to the exact pixel, quickly resize the image, make it a thumbnail, insert a border, or link to the image. Historically, wikis have utilized the language syntax known as wiki markup. However, Confluence's revolutionary new editor takes the speed of wiki markup and combines it with the power of rich text. The result is auto-formatting. Let's take a look at how Confluence renders wiki markup on the fly. You can find all the formatting shortcuts in the keyboard shortcut dialog. Now that we're up to speed, let's try a few out. Let's create a heading by typing h1 period. Upon typing a space, your text will change from paragraph text to heading 1 text. For bolded text, just type star and then the text you want to bold. Upon closing the text off with another star, the text will automatically be rendered bold. Italicized text is just as easy. You can even create bulleted and numbered lists fast too. Maybe the most powerful feature, you can insert a table with just a few pipes. Upon typing enter, my table is ready to edit. And let's throw in a few emoticons for good measure. Auto formatting combines the best parts of wiki markup with the best parts of rich text editing. With the Confluence Editor, you have all of the power. Let's take a moment to discuss how you can encourage new user adoption in Confluence. Every Confluence user has the opportunity to create a personal space, if permitted by the global permissions, where they can create and publish their own pages and blogs. This space is particularly useful if you're using Confluence as an intranet, because it gives users an area of Confluence that's distinctly their own. For new users, this can be far less intimidating than creating content in a shared or public space. A user can make their personal space as open or closed as they want 
by setting their space permissions. I recently created a specification in my personal space for a new feature because I wasn't quite comfortable creating it in the development team space just yet. When I'm ready for the team to see it, I can easily move the page and all of its content to the team space using the Move Page dialog. Now that I've completed this, I think I'm ready to start drafting and creating content more publicly on our internet without creating it in my personal space first. Let's take a moment to discuss Confluence page templates and how they can encourage adoption for new users. We'll start by adding a new page from the dashboard using an existing page template. I'd like to create some meeting notes, so I'll select the template and then give the page a title. I'll go ahead and fill out a few of the fields suggested by the template. All users are different. Some may feel liberated by a blank canvas, while others may feel intimidated. Page templates will allow your team and your new users to focus on content creation and less on content formatting, helping everyone contribute to your team's knowledge. For more details on how to create page templates, please refer to the Confluence documentation. As I work on this page, you may not have noticed one of Confluence's features that allow users to edit fearlessly. Confluence is set to auto-save content every 30 seconds, so if your browser crashes or you mistakenly quit out of your Confluence tab, your work is always safe. Let's quit out of this page without saving the most recent changes to see what happens. Confluence will automatically save this page to the drafts folder in your user menu, so I can resume editing where I left off. Let's revisit the launch task page. Let's say that Bill came to this page and added some information in the wrong place. The great thing about Confluence is that it records the complete history of every page edit, including who made the change, what change was made, and when the change was made. We can easily revert back to a previous version of this page. The first six versions of the page were created by me, and version 7, the current version of the page, was created by Bill. Confluence lets you select two versions to compare their differences and revert back to a previous version if necessary. We've just reverted back to version 6, and you can see that the content Bill added has since been removed. Now, Confluence has created an eighth version of this page, so we can always restore back to Bill's version if needed. This feature really breaks down the barrier to adoption and encourages users to contribute and edit to Confluence pages worry-free. We've discussed the power of the rich text editor in great detail and the features that allow for potent and fast content creation. Now it's time to discuss how Confluence promotes collaboration so your team can create content together and achieve better results.